Chris Johnston, Justin Bourne, you have joined me here to talk about something that should be a very, very exciting proposition for hockey fans, for Canadian hockey fans, and Leaf fans, especially in Toronto, the all Canadian division. You get to see matchups that maybe you only get to see once or twice a year. Connor McDavid versus Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, Patrick Line, just all this star power, especially out in Vancouver as well. So I ask you guys, if you're a Maple Leafs fan and if you're a reporter like you guys are covering the team, what excites you the most about the Leafs and an all Canadian division? Well, for me, it's just, a, as you mentioned, those, those big names. I think we have that everywhere, where you can go to Vancouver and have, uh, have them go head-to-head with Pedersen and the boys out there, and you can go to Edmonton and see McDavid and crew and Line a in Winnipeg. Like, they, there's some really great matchups, exciting games. And, uh, and I don't think a whole lot of really grindy teams, which plays in the Leafs' favor, so we could see a couple of track meets, which I know I enjoy. Coaches don't, but, hey, I look forward to that. Yeah, and I think one thing, Justin, that, that I know also that we talked about that you like is, is just the fact we're going to see these teams play each other a bunch of times in a row. And, and you know, that, that's going to be true of the other divisions as well. But I, I think the idea that, you know, it isn't just, you know, a, a, a quick, you know, Matthews McDavid game that you might see three of them in a row where the, the coaches are going head to head in matchups and stuff like that. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, th- this isn't setting up as a division like the old Norris division where I think we're seeing a bunch of fights, but I do think. The, the competitive aspect will be a little bit different with the unique schedule that's going to happen here. And, you know, obviously I think the fans are going to get into it too. I mean, this is something that'll get the players attention, but I think this is a, a home run uh, for Canadian hockey fans too. No, let's be honest. There's so many matchups between, you know, the battle of Ontario or the Leafs and the Habs and some of those games turn out great. Other times the hype doesn't exactly match up with what happened. So could the, could we see some developed rivalries here that maybe lead to a lot of hate between these two teams for years to come? Well, to me, it's inevitable. And look, you've only got seven teams in the division, and we're talking about a 60-game schedule. And, and you know, one thing I've heard discussed is it might not just be play the other six teams ten times, that you know, the, the sort of Eastern-based teams like Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto might play each other 12 times. They might play the Western teams eight times, something like that. But no matter how this ends up being broken down, I mean, that's a lot of games. If you're playing a division rival eight times or more per year, uh, you know, I don't know how you don't develop some hate. I mean, we saw Edmonton and Calgary last season, you know, really had some real not fake manufactured uh, discontent between them. And so I think that the, the familiarity here is going to breed some, some pretty interesting games. And Justin, I'm going to put you on the spot here. That's what I do. I got you here. I'm going to shock you from what, if you had to pick, is going to be the matchup that maybe surprises the most people that the Leafs go up against as far as a heavy rivalry that could develop some hate? I think Vancouver is just a sitting duck for a rivalry right there. I don't know if it's maybe just my online-centric life, but there seems to be a real animosity between Vancouver and Toronto in general, and I think there's some competition about, you know, who's got the bigger stars right now, or at least at the top end of the young kids with Pedersen and Hughes and, um, you know, all of the stars we talk about all the time here in Toronto. So I think that's a matchup that could really catch fire. I'm excited about it. If we get it eight times in a season, maybe it, uh, you know, it could be Calgary Edmonton last year, minus some fighting. Now, it's going to be a new format. It's going to be strange. And I think right now we're all focusing on just let's get started. How is it going to look? If you're the teams, though, you're focused on what does this mean for us competitively? Does an all-Canadian division help us? Does it hurt us? If you're Sheldon Keefe, you're Kyle Dubas, you're Brendan Shanahan, if you're looking at this all-Canadian division, are you saying, this is going to be a lot harder for us, or we love this? I think the guys got to love it. I don't know if the coaches and GM will think this way, but let's face it, like these players have spent the last number of years in the Atlantic division where every year they were either going to play Boston in the first round or Tampa. And I know they ended up getting Columbus because the return to play format was different, but let's remember if a world where coronavirus doesn't come along, it was very likely to be a Leafs lightning first round matchup in the two, three format. I mean, this, this changes everything for Toronto. I mean, they, they've been sort of second fiddle to those teams that were either more experienced, more accomplished than them, and knew they were going to have to go through them in the early rounds with the, the divisional playoff format. I mean, not, to me, the Leafs are the alpha dog in this division, and that's not to, to, to say that the other teams aren't accomplished, but let's face it, none of these teams have won anything yet. I know Vancouver had a nice run in the Edmonton bubble in the summertime, but you know, these, these are all teams trying to strive to get somewhere, and I think that the Leafs should enter it probably as, as the division favorite. Well, it's just so different from previous years where every night you kind of feel like you're either supposed to win or supposed to lose. You're either playing Ottawa or Detroit or you're playing Boston or Tampa Bay. This year, like every time the puck drops against a Canadian team, 
what team do you not expect the Leafs to beat? Like, you feel like every night they should be the favorite going into that game. I think that could be contentious across Canada, if you you know, from some other fan bases. But from where I sit, they should win. You know, they should beat those teams. So, uh, they have to like their position. It gives them a better chance to win a division. And we all know how that, uh, that works in your favor come playoffs. So, I have two questions left. One for Chris, one for Justin. Chris, I'll, I'll get to you first. Maybe just the news and notes, the actual physical division how it's going to work just take us through how you anticipate the schedule will work and kind of how this whole thing will play out and be structured well the biggest question for me and I actually don't believe this has been answered even at the league or PA level is how is the playoffs going to work and you know it's possible I think that we enter this season maybe with this not exactly spelled out yet because you know the border issue is what's brought this division together this is the reasons it's happening and even here in, in mid to late November, or if it's in December when they, they finalize the coming season, you know, I don't know if they know what it's going to look like in May when we're looking at having the first round of the playoffs. And so, you know, I think it's likely we're going to see completely interdivisional play in the first two rounds, you know, abolish the wild card, essentially one versus four, two versus three in round one, and then the, the winner of those two is going to round two. And if that happens, obviously it guarantees us a Canadian team into the conference final. But, you know, that to me is the biggest sort of question mark hanging over this. Uh, as I said, I, I don't know that there's been a, f a firm decision on exactly how the schedule is going to break down, but we do know that these Canadian teams are going to be playing each other a lot, and potentially they might have to go through each other for the chance to get to the conference final. Now, Justin, your question, it's a juicy one. Actually, I want CJ to answer this one too, but Orno, I'm putting you on the spot because it's, uh, it's what I like to do. I made you rank all the reverse retro jerseys and said <laughs> all the Twitter hate towards you, so I'm doing it again here. What team will come out as the number one team in this all Canadian division? Let's hear it. Well, this is the Toronto Maple Leafs video, so I'm going to say the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> I would Smart love man. to have some chutzpah and pick another team, but that, it's got to be the lead. I'm CJ, if, if Borno's going to get some Twitter hate or some Twitter love, I got to give you the opportunity too. Oh, it's got to be the Leafs. I mean, honestly, I, I want to make a case for another team too. Like I, I like some of what Calgary did. I think Edmonton had a tidy off season. I'm not sure, you know, how Vancouver builds after losing some key players uh, from, from their return to play. But I mean, entering this, you know, with knowing what we know now on paper, I think it's, it's got to be the Leafs as favorite. So I, I'll, I'll stick with them too. And I'm at reporter Chris, if you want to send some hate my way. Have fun on I'm, Twitter, I'm taking boys. Edmonton for my second pick, though. Edmonton will be my, my, uh, well, my dark runner. Talk about, talk about hedging a bet. He saw the tweet hate <laughs> coming in. He saw all the mentions and thought, I better throw in Edmonton. Want to throw in Vancouver, Calgary, Winnipeg, too. Well, I'm yeah. going Montreal as my number two. I think Toronto, then Montreal. Stand by. I, and, hey, I'm just the host. I pass. It's my questions. I don't have to answer it. But, uh, gentlemen, uh, thanks so much for doing this, and uh, I appreciate the time.